Hi, and welcome to Sheep Connect SA 10 Minute Talks. Today, we're in Jamestown for the AWI Shearing and Sheep Handling Demonstration and Innovation Day. We've been joined by a range of people to give us a 10 minute talk. It's my pleasure to introduce Ben White from the Condinen Group to talk about sheep handlers. Um, yeah, I'm Ben White. I'm a research engineer with Condinen Group. And for those that don't know, Condinen Group is a little bit like Choice Magazine where we independently evaluate um, equipment and uh, technology. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about sheep handlers and for those that are in the market for a sheep handler, I suppose just some considerations that you might want to uh, think about before handing over your hard earned money. Uh, at the end of the day, the machine's got to be fit for purpose. And, and what I mean by that is something that's um, going to ultimately do what we want it to do, and that is reduce the, uh, the, the workload on the operator. We want to make sure that the, uh, that the operator uh, can be positioned in an ergonomic way and, and operate on the, on the animal uh, without the stresses on the body that they might have had otherwise. So that's first and foremost. I think um, as well as being safe for the operator, uh, it's also got to be safe for the sheep and make sure that the, the sheep welfare is taken into account and make sure that the, uh, once we're in the process of doing that operation, we're not damaging the sheep in any way. Sheep handlers should be nice and quiet when they're operating. We don't want excessive noise that can uh, disturb animals and stir them up and make them more difficult to handle. We want to keep them calm and, and uh, in a low stress environment. So quiet operation is, uh, is absolutely essential. We've also got to make sure that we've got different size sheep. Uh, we need to be able to adjust the machine to accommodate those different size sheep. So um, being able to make that adjustment easily Maybe if there's a tool required that that's provided or they require some simple tools uh, just to make those adjustments to accommodate different size animals and different operations. The sheep handler shouldn't impede the job we're trying to do. So for example, if we're crutching, we need to be able to access areas for just a small uh, crutch or keyhole crutch or if we're doing a full crutch, we want to be able to get the handpiece into all areas that we need to get it into. So just a couple of thoughts with regard to access. Make sure that things aren't in the road both for the operator and all the handpiece and the equipment that you're using uh, at the time. Build and finish is an important consideration. At the end of the day, the sheep handler is only going to last for as long as, as, the, as the quality of the build. So we need to make sure that that build quality is solid. Uh, we're talking about high cycles of, of uh, throughput here. So a lot of sheep moving through a handler over its lifetime. So it's got to be well, well built. And also finish has to be taken into account. And whether that's paint or whether that's um, you know, a, a non-corrosive finish, uh, ideally, something that's going to stand the test of time and, and uh, provide uh, lengthy service uh, during the lifetime of the machine. Finish also should take into account the quality of welds and also uh, any uh, burrs or sections that might be uh, uncovered. They should be covered in, in, the, in a quality finished uh, product. So making sure that the machine isn't going to, uh, I guess, injure the operator in that respect uh, is also something to think about. Technology is a really important part of the sheep industry going forward and so the integration of technology into the handler should be considered. What I'm talking about is things like EID panels should be able to be fitted to the machine without uh, impeding the machine performance and or impeding the performance of the EID reader. Parts availability and backup is also essential and so making sure that you've got access to parts that, that might be uh, might need replacement over the life of the, of the machine is, is important. Equally, service and backup uh, should also be provided, uh, including any uh, potential training that might be required to operate the machine as effectively as possible. For those poor old left-handers of us out there, we need to make sure the machine can uh, operate for both right and left-handers. We need to make sure that uh, for those that are left-handed, that either the machine can be ad adjusted or adapted uh, so that workflow isn't impeded. At the end of the day, buying a sheep handler is all about improving the efficiency and workflow of animals through the yards, making sure that uh, we're doing things more effectively than we've uh, been able to do them manually, and also ultimately re reducing the, the workload on the operator. So if you're going to buy a sheep handler, make sure you think about all the things that we've just spoken about, take those into account, uh, and ultimately come, will come down to price in the, at the end of the day. Um, but I would add that, that uh, quality comes at a cost, so don't be afraid to spend a little bit extra up front to get a machine that's going to suit your requirements. Thanks Ben for your 10 minute talk today. Sheep Connect is funded by Australian Wool Innovation, the South Australian Sheep Industry Fund and the Department of Primary Industries and Regions.
If you want to know more about Sheep Connect, you can go to our website, sheepconnectsa.com.au, or you can follow us on Twitter.